occurred on March 24th in Edison, New Jersey, when a 36-inch uh, natural gas transmission line ruptured just outside of a 63-building apartment complex. If it wasn't for the swift action of the Edison Fire Department, the conflagration could have easily overtaken the entire complex. Shortly after midnight on March 24th, residents at the Durham Woods Apartments were awakened by a furious explosion and a deafening shower of debris. Just outside their complex, a ruptured 36-inch pipeline carrying natural gas from Maine to Texas had ignited, creating a 60-foot crater and shooting flames 500 feet into the air. First in responders arrived within minutes, only to find the access roads choked with panicking residents fleeing for their lives. Uh, the best way I could describe it to you would be like uh, Times Square on New Year's Eve. It was just bedlam coming out of there. We proceeded to uh, get the engine through the traffic, which was actually coming out on both lanes uh, at us. We came up as far as buildings three and five and backed the engine up to building eight. At this point, we couldn't go any further because the extreme heat uh, was coming off this fireball down here. What I did is, at this time, we could see that building 12 was burning, 10 was not, 9 was not. I couldn't see the other buildings because of the tremendous glow. I decided at this point that we couldn't get near here, so we set up a deck gun right here and proceeded to wet down this building. And then we laid our lines down to this hydrant here. Uh, my driver, and I had another fellow, uh, firefighter Bowigan, who left and did a search for us to get some of these people out of here and proceeded to help the rescue company. The remaining residents had only a few precious moments to escape, but with rocks pummeling the buildings, the deafening noise, and the searing heat, it didn't take much to convince them to evacuate. At this point, Lieutenant Freeman uh, had radioed the command post. He had overwhelming amount of fire, multiple buildings on fire. So the chief sent myself in to coordinate the effort in the, com in the apartment complex. Uh, I was given a ride in by a police cruiser. Uh, I met up with another engine company that was responding, Engine Company 11, which worked its way back to this point over here, which was the opposite flank of the fire. Uh, we began evacuating people uh, that weren't already self-evacuated from buildings in this area. Uh, I directed Engine 11's Lieutenant, Lieutenant Peter Borwigan, to set up a line here in defense of buildings 23 and 25. Uh, at this point, they were in direct line of the radiant heat from this fireball, and there was no shelter for them, and they, they took a tremendous beating. They eventually located their engine at this hydrant and supplied a master stream to protect buildings 23 and 25. I then came back to this point here where truck one had backed into this intersection with a supply from engine number six, which was at this hydrant. Uh, the fire was in full control of these four buildings, 21, 24, 11, and 12. And it was extending to the next four, 22, 29, and 10. At this point, I recognized that the volume of fire that was just beginning in these buildings was beyond our capabilities to stop. So we set up a defense along these lines here to protect the rest of the buildings. Had the next row gone, had the next row become involved, we would then be faced with eight more buildings we would have to protect. So it was important that we set up the defensive line right away. Almost immediately, initial engines encountered a water problem. Half a mile away, the nearest pumping station had failed due to the downed power lines in the area. Three five-inch hose relays were quickly deployed to bring the sectors the water they so desperately needed. Back at the command post, Chief Lamke called for all the equipment and manpower he could get. There's no way our resources could have controlled it without uh, the mutual aid assistance. It's just uh, impossible for any one town to be able to uh, control an incident of this size by themselves. We have the Middlesex County Fire uh, Coordinator's Office uh, through the emergency management system. Uh, they responded on the scene. Uh, it seemed like all of us instantaneous. One of their uh, coordinators was in my uh, command post. And uh, they were fantastic. All I did was uh, 
Tell her to set up a uh, staging area at one of our uh, local restaurants about another half mile, three quarters of a mile right down the road. And uh, all the equipment we needed was available at that time. Uh, I'd asked for five engines, a couple ladders, and uh, within a matter of minutes, I'd see them going by my location on the way to the fire scene. So the mutual aid was uh, fantastic. It was somewhere around 36 uh, other townships, uh, most from Middlesex County, responded to the incident. Throughout the incident, Chief Lamke's greatest concern was the safety of the responders. The radiant heat from this uh, fire was unbearable. It's totally unimaginable uh, unless you were there. And uh, I've got to say that I was very concerned when I was sending all the equipment there and sending our firefighters there that uh, I may never see some of them again. There was one point where they asked for uh, water, as you can imagine, in the intense amount of heat, they were being dehydrated very, very quickly. And I turned to the uh, police officers who were at the scene, and I told them to go to the nearest uh, path mark down the road and get all the water that was available, and if necessary, take it by gunpoint. We just needed it right then and there. They went and loaded up the police cars and uh, brought back gallons and gallons of water. Chief Lamke paid very strict attention to the rotation of personnel. The amount of uh, intense heat would have to draw on these guys very, very quickly. We sent uh, manpower down in police cars from the command post, in buses down to the command post. And, uh, you know, the, the good aggressive firefighters I have, um, it, it actually got to a point where we had to order them out of the area. They wanted to, they were, they were getting temporary relief back at a, uh, at a section away from the fire, but uh, they kept going back for more and more. So it got to a point where I had to give orders that the, uh, the, the initial people at the scene were uh, brought back to the command post area where we had a uh, emergency medical uh, uh, system set up where everyone was checked with blood pressure and uh, pulse. For the next two and a half hours, despite the intense relentless heat, the firefighters held their ground, losing no other buildings to the flames. The next day, when the fire ground had cooled enough, search dogs were brought to the scene to help locate any fatalities. Miraculously, there were none to be found. Uh, people apparently just left. They left the area without telling anybody that they were okay, which necessitated us searching the rubble for them. But once we had everybody check in and say we're okay, we are able to secure the scene and say it, it's, it's now no longer a fire problem, it's no longer a search problem. Uh, we left it to the investigators. Um, lessons to be learned. There is no municipality, I don't care how big, how good, that could be prepared for something like this to happen all of a sudden. You have to have a good uh, emergency plan in your municipality that coordinates with your county, that coordinates with surrounding towns. We could not have accomplished this uh, without the mutual aid and the emergency management help we got from the county and the surrounding towns. You have to have a good plan, you have to work with it and practice with it. I'm as proud of, as a peacock that uh, job that all the firefighters did. The fact that uh, the NFPA was in a day or so later, one of their investigators, and uh, they were totally amazed that uh, we were able to save the amount of buildings that we did. It, it was totally amazed when the fire was over that there were no civilian injuries, but I was also very concerned that the firefighters operating in that vicinity that we may have some firefighter casualties also, but everything worked out just fantastic. And that's all because of the uh, uh, duty and, and skill and, and bravery of the officers and firefighters that were actually on the scene. I just can't say enough about that. I agree, Chief. It is truly a miracle that no one was directly killed by the fire. However, there was one death, a cardiac case, uh, which was distant from the apartment complex. It's a miracle also that, that the responders were able to stop the fire where they did. And I like the way the lieutenant described on his uh, bl blueprint there of the complex, how he immediately did an effective size up and realized that he ne needed to go into the defensive mode. And you, talk, and you listen to the chief and the captain talk, the defensive mode rode off eight buildings, but allowed them to come up with a saving uh, protective line or, or, or barrier that saved the rest of that. Remember, it's a total of 63 buildings in this complex. And also, I agree with the chief very strongly. It was the mutual aid. It was the pre-planning. It was knowing where to tap in when the water system went down and all the resources that came in that really made a difference and really gave them something to work with in this particular situation. Now let's take a look at our second incident, which happened February 3rd in Steamboat Springs, Colorado.
an airplane crash. That was it. When I saw that sky lit up, I said, we got to get out of here. It was this intense heat. So all of what I did was to grab my daughter and to get out of the house and just start running. It was just a tremendous explosion. The building was shaking. There was this tremendous light coming through the blinds, like the orange and, and yellow. It, it was so bright, it was like it was the middle of the day. I couldn't find my family, and I couldn't get into complex, so I had to walk around the woods to mud to try to find my family. Governor Christy Whitman calls for destruction in Middlesex County like ground zero at a nuclear blast. Residents of the Durham Woods apartment complex were abruptly awakened by a huge explosion and a deafening shower of debris. Just yards from their complex, a 36-inch pipeline carrying natural gas from Maine to Texas ruptured, igniting a huge fireball sending flames 500 feet into the air. A horrifying fireball lights up the night following a thunderous blast in Edison, New Jersey. A natural gas pipeline exploded, vaporizing buildings and leaving this huge crater. Good evening, incredible devastation, yet little... Radiant heat from this uh, fire was unbearable. It's totally unimaginable uh, unless you were there. I've got to say that I was very concerned when I was sending all the equipment there and sending our firefighters there that uh, I may never see some of them again. it to you would be like uh, Times Square on New Year's Eve. There's no way our resources could have controlled it without uh, the mutual aid assistance. It's just uh, impossible for any one town to be able to uh, control an incident of this size by themselves. Mutual aid was uh, fantastic. There were somewhere around 36 uh, other townships, uh, most from Milsis County, responded to the incident. and firefighters that were actually on the scene. I just can't say enough about that.
couldn't get couldn't get it in that good. It's all blurry though. It doesn't have like a clear picture. Yeah, the, the, the focus is not working on that for some reason. It's still blurry. I well, can't get it. Play around with it. See what you can do. I don't, I don't know nothing about it. I don't know nothing about this camera. Grab the box out of the wagon. Take it in the back of truck five and see what the book says. Oh, wait a minute, there we go. Let's Yeah, you can go down. 